we just can't get a mortgage and around here the house prices are so high. Option. You've got to do it, you've got to do it. Wow. Kind of has clarity, it looks very beautiful, doesn't it? it this, does. These cut windows. If it was me, I think I'd put my bath right here. Kinky. Oh, what have they done? I haven't got absolutely no clue with design. Oh. How much money have you got left? Oh, uh, let me see. If I think too much about everything, I think, whoa! You are doing it on a very tight budget. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's no doubt about that. I haven't got the time to cry. <laughs> Where's the joy in this project at the moment? There isn't any. There needs to be. My learning curve has been vertical, so it sort of feels like I'm scaling a cliff. If Timothy doesn't understand what she's doing, take control, there isn't going to be a house. I'm meeting a lady for whom that daunting prospect has become a stark reality. She knows absolutely nothing about building a house, but she's going to have to learn fast. I've got the hills. I've got the green, I've got the pub, and the neighbours. This is what I'm happy with. It just made me smile. And, uh, because it was so quirky. <laughs> I mean, it was totally wrong for what I wanted to do. But it was sort of, that's OK, I can change a kitchen, yeah, no big deal. This isn't just shelter, it's going to be uh, my home, my income, but it's where it satisfies my soul. to go all around pulling everything away from the wall. You see, that's well away from the wall um, because everything was getting wet. As my son very succinctly said, I've only got another 20 years ahead of me. So if I'm gonna, I've only got another 20 years, I want those 20 years where I want to be. And this is where I want to be. And if to be here, I have to go through this process of knocking down a house and rebuilding, so be it. People often say, you know, you're so optimistic, nothing gets you down. 
It's not true. I'm like a duck that's very calm on the outside and paddling like crazy underneath. You've got to look at it positively. You've got to find, how do I deal with this? I haven't got the time to cry. <laughs> Timothy, nice to see you. And you. How are you? Fine. This, <laughs> as you can see, is the kitchen. <laughs> but tell me about this place. I mean, you found this spot, but this building on it is a rather strange one, isn't it? It's it kind is. of a prefab. It's done its job. It's been here for 60 years. But yeah. I, I don't think I looked at some of the things I should have done. Right. Um, so you got a few surprises. Yes. <laughs> it comes through here to the lounge. Yeah. So the original idea here was to keep the building, kind of open it up and make it more suitable mm. for you. It was obviously it needed TLC, but I didn't know what extent of TLC. Right, so... And now it's quite clear that TLC isn't enough. When was it that you realised that there's going to be... First month I moved in. I mean, it must have been really <laughs> worrying when you thought you'd bought a home that you could just do up... Yes. ...into one that yeah. you've had to demolish. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. how did that feel? Dire. Dire. I was setting up a new business, I was starting up new here and had enough money to do all of that. To knock it down and start again, did I have enough for that? And that was the first worry because it was quite clear you couldn't, you couldn't just put an envelope around it. Yeah. it would, you'd be throwing good money after bad. You are doing it on a very tight budget. I mean, you know, there's no <laughs> doubt me about, about that. It, yeah. I mean, does it does it worry you that the potential might not be met of this beautiful site that, you know, yeah. that maybe you can't yeah. stretch? If the worst comes to the worst, I've got room to put my tent up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true enough. I think there are a few simple things you could do to make this a much better building. Spatially, internally, it's this, you know, everything is 2100, 2400, that is, you know, kind of the, sta the most standard dimensions you can get in building. I mean, it doesn't, wouldn't have cost anything to, to no. just a little no. bit more generosity no. on ceiling no. heights. And truss rafters with all of that space then concealed, you know. It's so got a big loft. Coming. Big loft, <laughs> which you can't use because these truss, truss rafters run through. Yeah. I would get rid of the ceiling and just open this up and make it a lofty space and expose these truss rafters running through. This just needs reconfiguring, so this is a bigger space. You can actually make this potentially an interesting, you know, large, sort of simple space. She needs a place that's kind of oriented around mm. her yeah. great skills and her great mm. kind of mm. gregarious nature. Mm. This building just doesn't seem to me to be doing that. And I would, I would use cheap materials like kind of chipboard and those kind of things. Use things that are already there in a way. There's going to be a big risk here mm. whether we can suggest things that are achievable in the budget and in the time frame. And I just want to help her make a building that is not the absolute lowest common denominator. 
at the moment she looks at this and thinks she's just going to be grateful for a place that doesn't mm. leak, that, that is a place she can live in. But the tragedy is that she will just end up with something that's warm and dry and nothing else, you know. Which is and this. Exactly. And actually, you know, she'll regret it. fairly resilient but right now my bounce is gone uh, but if you've got to do it you've got to do it you know so no point in crying over a cardboard cottage Timothy is really demoralised with her own environment and it's made her lose confidence in the whole process of building a house. It's made her think that she's having to settle not just for second best or third best, but kind of 20th best. So what I hope to, to realise today, to achieve today, is that she realises she can have something amazing. It's going to reflect her lifestyle, her personality, allow her to run her cooking business from there, etc, etc. And really get her to become excited and motivated by the whole process of building a house. I'm not bringing you somewhere that's over the top and lavish and unachievable. I'm bringing you here to show you that this is a very modest house. It's beautifully conceived and you could have something as well conceived as this if we act now. That would be really good yeah. to see what, what I can do in the very, very, very yeah. finite budget I have. Yeah. This is beautifully light. Yeah, it is, yeah. isn't it? It is. Isn't it? So, what do you think coming up and seeing it? I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's good. Good. I, mean, I guess, how would you feel if I told you you could have something as nice as this for your budget in your house? I'd say you were telling me fairy stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is lovely. So zoning spaces yeah. is very important. So starting from this end, uh -huh. there's a device here to keep all the clutter from right. view. But when yes. you cook, you have this fantastic yes. frame view yes. of that. But yeah. critically, these windows relate to what's happening right. there. So yeah. there's a window directly yeah. opposite the kitchen. Uh -huh. There's a window directly opposite the dining area. Yeah. The dining area has a roof light over it. Uh -huh. There's some open shelves that separate the space from that. Yes. Then over the sitting area, another roof light and a key window at the end looking at the view. And that's about it. That zones this space beautifully. And so it's very, very simple. Very, and very like, simple I indeed. Like the simplicity of it. The moment you're doing, you know, something that is kind of like this. Yep. For no more money, you could have an increased sense of space by, you know, even if you do that right. instead. feels yeah, more spacious yeah. uh -huh. for no more money uh -huh. it's a it's a space and it means that if you're sitting here with your wood-burning stove there right you're not sitting outside your bedroom you're no. sitting in yes. a much more yes. generous space uh -huh. that doesn't feel like a corridor and then i think a beautiful kind of sculptural kitchen island there 
you can see two distinct areas, yeah. which, which was worrying me because, as you say, it was corridor-like. Mm. Mm. It's the shape of it. Exactly, and, and I, space. I didn't know that I could. Mm. I, I mm. You, can, you can definitely do that. You know, having a wall like that instead of like that transforms the building, but it costs no more money. I'm not as a staff to think that it's all going to be clear sailing. I know there's going to be a lot of work. But the difference between doing a lot of work with uh, an end product that you can see and you're looking forward to makes it easier. One side of me, I'm excited because it's at last, at last getting going. The other side of me, it's quite sad, isn't it? Knocking a building out is a big deal. I know, I've done it. You knock it down and then you're left with the enormity of suddenly having nothing, having a house that you've invested significant amounts of money in has gone. When I did it, I woke up bolt upright in the middle of the night and thought, how on earth am I gonna build a house? I've got nothing. And the reality of it really hits you. You've got to make it happen. So the danger, of course, is that she will just sit back and let her very nice builder just finish it, just to get a house. Whereas actually, we need to realise that she can have the house and a little bit more for no more money. Because it's a team of different people who yeah. are all individual, like there's an individual plumber with his own business. But who's coordinating each of them? Me at the moment. OK, so you've asked each of them for separate prices for their yes. bits of work. Yes, yes. OK, yes. so the groundwork is doing one thing, the yeah. plumber's doing another, the timber yeah. frame is doing another. Yeah. You yeah. are the main contractor. Yes, yes. And yeah. how do you feel about that, that responsibility? It's my house. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a spreadsheet Whatever. of who's doing what and what their costs are? Don't be are? silly. I write things down. We're not spreadsheets. Okay. Okay. You have a, some, something that sets out what each person yes. is charging. Yes. Getting the timing right and getting right. commitments from these people mm. to be here at mm. these times is really important. For uh -huh. example, the plumber will need to come and do first fix right. when before the linings go on. Right. And then when the linings go on, he'll come back and do second fix okay. and so on. So he'll okay. do a couple of revisits. If you end up holding something up, he has grounds to charge more money. So I'd like to look at a little rough programme with you, just sit down and run through a few, a checklist. Yep. If I knew what I had to do, yep. I'd probably yep. worry myself silly. Yes. And I think in some respects that the fact that I'm not aware yep. helps me. I'm, yes. you know, like an innocent abroad. <laughs> Sympathy is acting as construction manager for this thing. That is an extraordinarily sophisticated thing to do, to control and sequence the trades as they happen. And it's a really skilled task, and you need experience and building knowledge to be able to do that effectively. My worry is that Sympathy doesn't have that and doesn't know how complicated it is. So I'm very concerned that things could spiral out of control.
Well, it's really wonderful to be up here, actually, surrounded by all this ancient timber. You know, and that's part of the experience of this house. It's part of the quality of the architecture here. That the, this mezzanine and so on gives you the opportunity to get close to it, and that's great. But I think what's also interesting is that it's not necessarily kind of ideal. You know, these proportions were not designed to accommodate a two-storey house. It was a barn. And so you end up with some quite odd ceiling heights. You have to watch your head in a couple of spaces around there. But that doesn't really matter. You know, of course they had the constraint of a historic building here. I think what it reveals for us is, the, is that idea of kind of using the vertical in, in the house. You know, for, for Simothy, in such a modest home, you know, it's all about the horizontal, it's basically a bungalow. But if she could just open up, you know, open up vertically. While she's got very limited budget, and all of that budget is going on the kind of fabric of the building, the structure of the building, there's still opportunities to make some kind of spatial interest that's going to give her a lot of benefit long term. If she can accept the idea that some of this stuff that goes into making buildings is rather beautiful and expose it and allow the space to speak for itself, I think it's going to add so much to her build. was originally completely flat because it was a there was a ceiling he's saying put that to the full height so that again is keeping it totally open there I think it's fabulous it's absolutely fabulous originally this was a straight L like that so that was just like a rectangle coming along here, and that was another rectangle going on there. So because he's um, made the walls skew with, as opposed to just straight, it's, it's giving a different area. So my work area is a separate room, even though you haven't got barriers there. Although I've got open plan, it's um, a defined open plan. This is great, this, I really, really do like this. The point is, like, it's simple. If you, when you get the drawings, and if somebody just lets you work through the drawings, it's easy. It's when they can never make a decision or they fire other decisions, and it's always trying to change stuff, the job becomes a lot harder because nobody knows what they're doing. So we need decisions made so we can get the project built. I never realised how green, like, Sumathy was. Like, I never realised how much she didn't understand about the build. Uh, but I'm realising it all now, but we're at the stage where we really need to get cracking and get some decisions made. The first thing is wondering whether there's a possibility of taking taking out this ceiling. Yeah, well, there is a possibility of doing that, but obviously the truss details would yeah. have to be altered. It would be a lot heavier timber, it makes the trusses more expensive. How much, I'm not sure, we'd have to find out. Mm. If that can come within the budget, yeah. great. Could, could you not use, what if you just used the same truss but just took out the ceiling and moved the ceiling to that point? and then... Expose the trusses. My only reservation would be regarding the, the insulation. Yeah. The simplest thing to do is to put a pre-finished board goes yeah. on top that you will then look at, up at. Needs no decorating. Right. The insulation, which could be goes rigid, on sits on top of that, top of yeah. that right. and then you batten Your tail on top yeah. of that. As I say, I don't know anything, but from what you're talking about, it sounds that this is easier. What, what's the downside on it? Is it just because you've, you've been having this thrown at you? Well, I've had quite a lot of thrown yeah. at me, if I'm honest. I mean, I'm, I'm just taking it all in. We'll, we'll yeah. see what, if we are able to do it. Yeah. The next thing is that 
this wall here, we just want to move around. It's very simple and it's mm. going to, you know, it's the same amount of material yeah. and work, so that's yeah. just going to happen. That sounds like a win to me. You, you're still looking worried. I just want, you know, finally what I'm doing so of I can course, get cracking. Of course, of course. I mean, the sooner I can get these this to you tomorrow, yeah. the, sooner, the sooner we can get some prices from uh -huh. you, the better. Yep. And we can, um, you know, Sympathy then can make a decision. I felt quite nervous about, or quite anxious about setting the cat among the pigeons, because it seems like I'm coming in and shaking everything up. But I genuinely believe that these things are for the better. green. I don't know who to go to for what, and I don't know what different people's roles are. The baseline is this woman has only got a limited amount of money. There's no way I can raise any more. There's no, there's no fripperies. What I need is shelter, a reasonable shelter. I need warmth. Can we do it within this? How do you feel about the potential savings in those? Well, from what you're saying, it, sound, it sounds really good. Yeah. And yeah. It, I mean, at the end of the day, if it's all complies with building regulations yes. and it's cheaper, yeah, yeah, it may like it yeah. makes sense to me. But absolutely, assuming they need to make decisions, because I'll be honest, the whole job's a nightmare. You, you're going to have to explain these things, yeah. and she's going to have to make the decision about it. Absolutely, completely. Because it's the whole up. project's like yeah. stuck. Fantastic. Okay, that's wonderful. Thanks so much. The big control mechanism here is the self-builder, which is Sympathy. Yet she has no idea what's going on. She has no idea that it's her responsibility to hold all this together and plug the gaps. If Sympathy doesn't understand what she's doing, take control, there isn't going to be a house. I'm here because I want to talk to you about this whole process that you've already embarked mm -hmm. on, which is a highly sophisticated one where you're managing a construction project. Mm -hmm. We think building a house is a simple thing because we see it happen around yeah. us. It yeah. isn't. It's a highly sophisticated yeah. thing where we need to put together a set of trades in a really efficient way mm -hmm. and make sure that they dovetail together nicely. Yeah. And that's something that people do usually with years of expertise. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing it with no experience mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned about how you're managing this open-ended process. What I want to do is find a simple control mechanism yes. for you yeah. in the form of an exchange of letters. Right. You write to a subcontractor, yes. they yeah. give you a price, yes. you accept it and you set out the terms, yes. when yeah. you're going to pay them, how yeah. long they're going to take yeah. to do it, uh -huh. and they sign it and send it back to yeah. you. So yeah. you have an agreement in place right. that they're going to do this. OK, that's the next bit then, yeah. that I will do that. I've tried to impress upon Sympathy that she is the project manager here. She is not just the project manager, she's the main contractor. She is in control of this build, not her subcontractors. Her subcontractors are only there to turn up and do a bit of her project, not the whole thing. She is controlling the whole thing, and I don't think she still realises that. You know, I don't give myself the title of the project manager. I am the client, and I am your employer. So, you know, if you are employed by me, you do the job of work you've said. The only trouble I have is not knowing quite what job of work they are doing. <laughs> MP 
employed different people. I've asked them to do, um, give me a quote for labour and for materials. And then I said, right, OK, I'll see about materials. I am pushing harder for getting um, a better deal because it's not as desperate to them as it is to you. I think it's bigger, really, than I expected. Piers have suggested opening up the, the whole rafters, which I like. I mean, I love the look of it. However, bearing in mind that I've been on quite a, um, a fine budget, these rafters wouldn't be strong enough to do that. You'd need heavier wood and bigger wood to do that. And although we can't have the vaulted ceiling, we have got uh, a variation on the theme. Instead of being straight up and like that, it'll have a, a little curve on it. Uh, so it gives it a bit, a bit of height, but it, it, it was the best compromise with, with the money factor. Hi, Timothy. Hiya. You're looking well. Looking great. You've got a house. I have got a house. It looks fantastic. It looks beautifully built as well. <laughs> but immediately I can see that you've raised the ceiling. Yeah. Here. You've raised the collar of these trusses. Yeah. Yeah. You've really actually done the right thing, which is keep it very simple, move this collar up a couple of feet, and you gain an amazing amount of space. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible how big it feels. Yes. Yeah. Doing okay. it. Oh, yeah, it's made. It's a better house with that done. So. Yeah. 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 So basically, we're waiting on, like, the windows coming. Yeah windows and doors and obviously the roofer just to get it sort of watertight before we start the next stage. You've spent quite a lot of money getting to this point. Tell me where you are with budget. How much money have you got left? I've got approximately 10 grand. I guess, critically, what I would love you to do is to retain this sense of space and yeah. avoid yeah. normalising it. Yes, but yeah. big blocks, big expanses of materials will uh -huh. make it seem big, yes. will kind of wrap around you. I mean, one strategy is that you could make the floor and the walls and the ceiling out of the same thing, which would be amazing. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely sure. <laughs> right. You could put OSB on the walls. It's very warm, mm. it's cheap, mm. and what you could do is not plasterboard your building, but just use this on the face of these studs right. with insulation between, okay. and that's your finish. You know how in the 60s they mm. always used to put all this pine cladding, yeah. and it got dark mm. and, and, you know, it was just too much? Mm. I'd be very wary of that. Yeah. taking you to one of the most remote parts of Scotland, uh -huh. 
quite a long way from your house at the southern end of yeah. Scotland. Yeah. But this is a similar landscape. This is, is big, it's yeah. dramatic, and yeah. it's all about context. And whatever you do here, you couldn't ignore that context. Yeah. And architecture here has to speak of its place, yes. as yours yes. should. This is a building that costs less per square metre than yours. This is a cheap building that uses materials so creatively. I come out in goosebumps when I see buildings like this. They're so fit for purpose, they're so intelligent. And the interesting thing is they're so cheap as well. I, I love your passion about it. It doesn't do the same for me. Uh, it's a bit masculine for me, but I do like parts of it. So, raw materials, all very basic, right. very cheap, no skirtings, concrete floor, exposed surfaces, uh -huh. breeze block walls. First impressions? I don't know what I was expecting, because you've talked about it and I really couldn't visualise what you're talking about. All of these materials are low-cost, low-grade, mm. used in an inventive way. And, you know, I think that low-grade materials are more beautiful than mm -hmm. quality materials, mm -hmm. than luxury mm -hmm. materials. These yeah. have more character, right. they're more humble, they're more honest, yeah. and I yeah. think nicer. So if you wanted to change, say, you know, just wanted to change, can you paint over them? You, you certainly can. You can. I've seen these varnish recently that look amazing. Right. And okay. people often paint these. Right. What's so great is this debunks the myth that all buildings need to be beautifully crafted. These are everyday materials yes. laid in quite a rudimentary way. Yeah, and, I, and I love the texture, the fact that you have got different textures. I mean, textures are everything. Yeah. This house has textures in abundance. And in the kitchen, there's this OSB board that I love. Does it not get greasy and no, stuff? No, because you seal this with a water-based finish that is right. flame retardant. I mean, this is next to a stove and there's not a mark on this. Have a, I mean, have a feel of this. This is a beautiful material. It's characterful. It's... Oh, that is nice, <laughs> isn't it? And this, this yes. is as cheap as it gets. You can't get any cheaper than mm. this material. How does this material finish when yeah. it meets the ground? Yeah. Well, you just hold it off the floor by about five mil right. and run the right. floor underneath it. And this is just plywood stained black. Yeah. And that's what yeah. you can do. Yeah. Bring this slightly right. proud, run the OSB and okay. make this a different material. Right. The other day we talked with Stuart about the need to be decisive now. We're on a deadline, we've got to get yeah. the project finished. Yeah. Time costs mm. money. Mm. So, looking at this, do you think you're going to do it in the kitchen? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know where. I'm, I'm just trying to visualise that. But it definitely it will be in, yeah. yes. Your building needs to be special in a quiet way, like this building mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and this cladding would certainly do it. Yeah. Mm. This doesn't shout, it doesn't play no. any tricks, no. it's just a simple, yeah. robust, beautiful yeah. material. And that's going to continue to weather nicely, isn't yeah. it? And it's so, cheap. It's yeah. cheap, it's yeah. sustainable, yeah. needs no maintenance. And what's great about this, as opposed to render, is this material ages beautifully. Yes. This has been up yes. for a few years now, and right. it looks better and better and better uh -huh. as it gets older. Uh -huh. Yeah. You can't yeah, say that about render. <laughs> mm. 
I think we've really got across the message that the use of low-cost materials in an inventive way is the key to finishing her house. It's also been great to see a transformed woman. So when I've been showing her these things, she hasn't been wanting to copy them. She's been making them her own. She's been saying, yes, I like that. No, I don't like that. And actually, this is what I'm going to do. I'm in control. When I next visit, I've got to see the fruits of those decisions. I want to see a house filled with that vigour that we've seen today. There's nobody here. This could all be done. <laughs> So it's really frustrating. And I can't blame the workmen because I didn't set them a target. If I'd known what to do, I could have booked them beforehand. It, it's not just a house to me, this is where I'll work from. So I need an income. The longer it takes to do this, the more out of pocket I am. What I like about the particular place we've come to today is that it's a, it's a kind of loft apartment in the original spirit of the lofts. This is a lifestyle that's about work and life playing together. And I think that attitude meant that the people who started to occupy these spaces, like this family, you know, kept the open spaces. They didn't divide it up and subdivide it into rooms. They wanted that link between working life, between domestic life and family life. It's the kitchen where you start to get a sense of, of the atmosphere of this place and how unprecious it is in terms of materials. It's just made you know, by bits of four by two almost, bits of softwood nailed together, nothing precious about that, and a you know, half-decent piece of oak-faced plywood. You know, what I like about this kitchen is that, of course, you get all of the stuff on display. It's open, particularly in these shelves here. You see right through them, so you keep those good views out towards the beautiful warehouse windows with the kind of tools of the trade on display hanging here. That feels right for a place that used to be a working place, and I think it would feel right for Simothy too. Cooking is part of her life, part of her identity. It's her work. Why not have these things open? You know, it also saves you from buying expensive doors for kitchen cabinets and so on. This is kind of allowed to be very open to the, to the rest of the apartment. That's really important. I mean, clearly, the, the shelves on this side have no back. You can see right through them. You get the light into this space, which is quite deep in the floor plan. I think people feel they need fitted kitchens simply because kitchen manufacturers are quite good at selling them and people don't think through what a kitchen is really for. Cooking together, having a drink together, preparing an evening meal for your family. And I think when you see a kitchen this cheap and informal but working so well, you think, actually, it doesn't matter. Just ignore fitted kitchens, make some shelves, put some nice stuff on it and just get cooking and get talking and have a, have, you know, have a life that's centred around those activities. This dresser, it's got a base and it's got a, a back that comes up, which would have plates. So that's the main focus right in the middle of the two big windows we see. There was a bathroom shop that was closing down and he gave me these tiles for free. 
<laughs> more and more, the house is fitting me as opposed to me fitting in a house. Now it's more exciting. My lovely bath, donated by a very kind neighbour, and it's a wonderful shade of pink, isn't it? <laughs> got the loo as well. You might have to change some of the plumbing. That's a fiver against £400 that I can use elsewhere. <laughs> That's it! I need brackets to support the basin. I'm not having standard units. This will allow you to keep everything visible, you know, whether it's your plates or even pots. This, it's at a lower level. I would just put it at a higher level because that would be far more useful for utensils to me. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Now, that is a bottle holder. Have a think about that. I feel now more in control because um, I've seen things in situ, so I've got something to argue with or to put a position with. Before, I didn't know. So this one's a larch? Yes. This one? This one is spruce. OK. This is what nearly all European and Scandinavian houses are clad with. Right. It's, it's very much less expensive. Right. This is it. This is it. Uh, once I've got planning permission, that's OK. The costings match up the way I'm thinking. This is the way I'm going to go. seen a super pink. I could just see that's going down a real treat. Have a, I mean, have a feel of this. This is a beautiful material. Oh, wow. Well, this is not You're at all shit. what I expected. No? It's amazing. <laughs> it's a feast of OSB. You've really embraced this well, material. I love it, though. It's so warm. And what I found I do, and I think you will do, is we just go and stroke yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's friendly. I mean, in here, you've also gone completely away from having just a kind of box-like entrance vestibule. This is really quite interesting, quite diverting with all these strange angles. And what's so good about that is that it doesn't cost any more, does it, no, to, to no. shift a few cheap walls one, around? And once you've done one thing, you could do other things. Well, tell me how you designed this. I'd just come in here to, to Stuart and I said, look, I want to go that way into that. I want to go into the living room like that. I want to go into the bedroom like that. It was just a nice feel. To I think go that around. just shows tremendous confidence on your part. I mean, you've just really embraced it. When we went to those buildings on the Isle of Skye, those low cost buildings, mm. I remember telling you that the hair on the back of my neck was mm. standing on end. Mm. And mm. that's what I feel now. I feel that's... fantastic. I feel inspired by this. I feel oh, inspired by what you've done. <laughs>
You've absorbed all those things, yeah. and it's you telling yes, your builders yes. what to do. What I also love is this incredible sense of generosity that this place has. This, mm -hmm. let's remember, is a small building on a tiny, tiny budget. This feels light, it, it feels does. spacious, uh -huh. it feels grand. The space is so much more usable. I just think you seem transformed through this process. <laughs> now I can just, I'm just excited to see the rest of it, really. Can we, can we please see the rest oh, of that? I'm, I'm aching to show you. <laughs> Shall I go first? Please. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, wow, it's fantastic. <laughs> Wow, it's just fantastic. And you've really pursued the OSB theme, uh -huh. haven't you? I mean, it's everywhere. But it works. Yeah. It works. If you're going to self-build, why would you self-build unless you're going to do what you want to do? So great to see these blocks that we saw at the Isle of Skye and I'm just so pleased that you've used these. I mean these are so modern, they're just not the sort of materials you'd expect to see in a, what seems from the outside like a relatively ordinary building. I love them, uh, I love the texture uh, and the honesty of it. And well, they're cheap too, aren't they? They are, yes. That, that, that's, that's the thing, that you can have good design that doesn't cost you a fortune. They're practical too, uh -huh. because they are the backdrop yeah. to a stove yeah. that will be here. This defines this space as the heart of the room. It's lovely, it's lovely. How much do you think you've saved? Um, a good three grand. Really? And so on your total budget, that's a pretty good percentage, huge, isn't it? I mean, that's amount. a big saving. Yeah. The, the, and that's the funny thing. By changing things, I've actually saved money. Mm. It doesn't have to be the way other people say. It's not a word I would use lightly, but you are challenging convention in such an enormous yeah. way here. Yeah. The use of materials, the use of space, mm. the stripping out mm. of convention, which are finishes. You've taken away finishes, you've taken away skirting boards, yes, architraves, yes, all of those sorts yes. of things. And you've ended up with a space that is far better and far cheaper. I mean, it's pretty basic right now, isn't it? We, you haven't got your appliances in. I mean, it's not quite a functioning kitchen. No, I wanted to be in. I'm, I'm fed up of being a nomad, which I have been for the last year. So I've got my what I want of my kitchen on order. So this but, it's, it's all coming. So what we see here, yeah. really, is just something that can evolve and change. But you know you what? Even though this is temporary, I could live with this mm. for quite a while until I got exactly what I wanted. So what you haven't done is fall into the trap thinking that you have to finish everything at the same time. What you've done very sensibly is to finish the fabric of the building that will be here for a long time and allow yourself the freedom for the interior to evolve over time. You've got it to the stage you need it and now you can move in and relax. Yeah. My oven ready house. <laughs> So, Timothy, it looks like it's almost finished, but not quite finished. What's happening with the cladding? We're going to have larch. Fantastic. And the beauty of larch is it doesn't need maintenance afterwards. So it'll go on a sort of reddish tone, but it very soon goes to a greyish green. You're speaking like a pro. Well, I've learned from you, Piers. <laughs> <laughs> that there's been a, a, a complete change in me from beginning to end. At the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing. And now, no, this is what I want. Mm. Well, so, you're an empowered woman. Not only am I an empowered woman, I reckon the builders think you've created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm totally honest, it's not really to my taste. 
I think OSB everywhere in the building is just a little bit too much, but it's her house and if she's happy with it, well, that's the main thing at the end of the day, but I certainly won't be doing it in my house. <laughs> And this is the bedroom. Uh-huh. All of that lovely ceiling height. Your furniture is really working, isn't it, in this it is. modern? They look great against this quite modern background. Yeah. I think it suits lots of different shapes and things. Well, I remember you and I standing probably just a little bit over there in the mm. old house, mm. and you were really devastated when you discovered the condition of that yes. building. And yes. I mean, that, that must have been a terrible blow. It, it was because I, I thought I'd found my dream home. It's, it's been difficult. It's not been easy. It wasn't a case of, right, you can go and get a mortgage. This is all you've got. You've got to do what you've got within this. How much have you spent so far on the build? I spent just over 50,000 to get to this stage now. Getting this much building of this kind of quality for 50,000 mm. pounds, I just think that's astonishing. Yeah. When, when you think back to the beginning of this process, did you believe that for 50,000 pounds you could have the kind of house that you actually really loved? No way. It was almost as if I deserved not to, because I'd been such a, a fool over the first. All I was looking for was a shelter. Oh, I think it was the best, best decision she ever made. The house that was here before was not suitable at all. It was, it was terrible, really. So I think she's actually dealt with it really well. This is a miracle, considering what was on this site before. I'm so impressed. I feel thrilled coming in here. She could have built a facsimile of her old cardboard cottage, but I've seen a woman become excited about the next stage of her life, and I think this house has done that for her. This house has empowered her to take control of her life. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here today, and I'm thrilled for Timothy because she's got a home from the direst circumstances. She's proven a point to any self-builder out there that you don't have to just take what a builder offers you or what's for sale in your local DIY store. You can have what you want as long as you're just willing to keep an open mind. I think Piers and Kieran both um, gave me back my confidence in myself. Just because you've made a mistake doesn't mean you've got to pay for it ad infinitum. I feel as if I'm reborn. The phoenix has definitely risen from the ashes. I'm not going to live in a barn, I'm going to live in a house and a home. I've got to sit forever on that hilltop looking like a plastic shed. It's going to be jolly tight. We're going to go over budget. I quite like this one. And I think that looks awful. There is no way that I'm going to be building any more houses. <laughs>